Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. I have been on vacation. I took a little art trip to Florida and created different things from napkin collage, watercolor, oil painting, and plein air outside. And it, I just did a bunch of stuff that I don't typically do and I had a fabulous time. You always need to just kind of take time for yourselves to reflect and recharge and learn new things as well. Don't forget that I'm starting the online tutorials where I just charge a small price per class and it is in the link below the video. And I'm teaching people that want to learn how to paint with acrylics from the beginning to the end on different paintings. Not the acrylic pouring so much. It will be more so things like flowers and fish and landscapes and abstracts and that kind of thing. So check it out if you're interested in learning how to do some of that. It's really very cost effective. So today I am going to pour on a 16 by 20 canvas which needs about 11 ounces of paint. So I have me a 12 ounce cup that I'm going to fill to the brim. And the colors and products that I'm working with today. These are from Walmart. They're Dollar Rowney and Simply Acrylics. And this is called Violet and this is called Purple. So to me it should be reversed the way they named them. But here's my Violet. There's my Purple. Then I added some Deco Art Satin Enamel White to the Purple for that color. This is dark blue here and I added white to that to get this color, the uh, satin enamel. And this one was a, I think a, just a turquoise that I mixed up on my own. And then I have my Artist Loft Black, which I always use Artist Loft Black or White. And I added a little bit of satin enamel to that to just tone it down and make it not quite so black. So it's kind of a charcoal color. And then everything was mixed one to one with Flood Floetrol latex based. And I always do one to one ratio. And then I add water. And especially, I'm trying to do this cloudy effect that I've done before. I didn't, I'm not going to use white in any of the pour because sometimes that white takes over. So I decided to try it by adding it just into the purple and the blue and a hint in the black to see if it would do anything in that beautiful cloudy effect. And I don't know if it will or it won't. And this is my water bottle. I added water to all of them. So they're pretty fluid, but they're still not watery. And they're still where you can stir it and where it comes off the stick in a steady stream, but a little bit watery, more watery than I usually do but not watery where it drips like it's watery paint. It still has to have some fluidity that is a constant stream. But you want it to pour onto the surface of your cup the color in it. You want to pour on top of it to where it just kind of goes down into the paint and does not stay in a mound on top of the surface of the paint. I've got my standby of just straight black and white Artist Loft Flow Acrylic in bottles that are mixed with Floetrol and some water. They don't have silicone. Some of these have a drop of OGX from using them before, so there may be some cells just happening from that. I'm going to just let that happen. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer the colors in the cup and just kind of see what happens. So what goes in first is going to come out last in the center. And I do think that I would like to see some of this charcoal color. So I'm going to pour about half of what I have in my cup. And I don't have a lot of that color. And then I'm just going to start layering colors.
this is, you know, like I said, totally experimental. I just thought I would try something a little different today. And I do love Melly D's cloudy effect. She's so good at that technique. So I have got a full cup. Again, it's a 16 by 20 canvas. I've got push pins in the bottom. And I think what I'm going to do is put my puppy kennel liner on the table to protect my butcher paper that's underneath. I've got another. I'm going to I'm going to do a tutorial using unicorn spit. The company has asked me to experiment with it and so that's going to be one of my next videos and I don't want a messy table so hold on just one second. So this is a puppy tray liner. It's a black liner. I got it on Amazon. It's made to put in the bottom of kennels to, you know, catch oopses and accidents. So I've got that. I'm going to lay my canvas on and that way if I have any beautiful drips they'll be saved on the plastic that can be peeled off later for acrylic skins for jewelry making and who knows what. So I'm going to zoom in just a bit. And I'm just going to pour kind of from the center of this last color I put in. So I'm kind of just shaking my hand a little bit instead of just letting it just stream into one central thing, but I'm, it's kind of a little bit of an open circular pattern, but you know, not really. With this kind of a technique, you don't need a steady hand, and I do not have a steady hand. And then I'm going to reverse it again. So sometimes you can start in one direction and then, you know, switch directions a couple of times if you want to. I'm going to try to use up all this paint. I always try to catch the drip before it comes out on the canvas. I don't like to drip across my painting. Some people like to just splatter and drip and I don't do that. I try to keep it pretty neat if I can. I'm going to just pop any bubbles. And again, this has OGX in a little bit of it, so there's nothing I can really do about that. I just wanted to go ahead and use these colors up. And because the white satin enamel does kind of cause that cloudy effect with the, uh, the big cell cloudy formations, I figured it's not going to hurt it to have some OGX in it. So I'm just going to... Circle around. I 
I love blues and purples together. So that's why I decided just to use these colors. I had, you know, the warm tones like yellow and orange and red, and then I had some green, but I didn't want those colors in this pour. So I'm going to I guess start tilting off the edges, even though I really don't want to lose my pretty purple. What I could do, what I could do, I don't see things popping through, which is kind of a good thing, but I did want, I did want that effect a bit, and it may still. I'm going to heat it again before I do anything else. I don't put a lot of heat on my paintings. I notice some people just go to town heating something and sometimes do it for quite a lengthy period of time. I don't do that because I do not want to, by any chance, dry the surface of my paint prematurely or, or risk the chance of burning the surface of my paint. I think what I'm going to do is add some more white to this pale purple to make it even lighter. I think I'm going to put a little bit of Liquitex pouring medium, even though I didn't use that in the other, in any of it to begin with. I'm going to put just a little squirt. And I do want it pretty fluid. I'm going to add just a little bit more water. I just dripped right in the, my painting, so I making sure I get that out. So this is just like a really pale version, but it has that deco art white satin enamel that everybody loves to use, or some people are using milk paint now. So I'm going to just go around the outside. When you haven't poured, I haven't poured in a week. You really, really miss it. If you're really, truly in love with this art form, you truly do miss it a good bit. And uh, you just kind of can't wait to get back and get into the groove of pouring. There's just something so calming and soothing and relaxing. I've had, you know, several weeks of really a lot of stress and my son is supposed to have gone off to a six month sober living program, but I don't know if he's there or not. I don't have any clue where he is, but that was the plan when he talked to me last weekend. So um, I needed to get away and just relax a little bit and forget about life's troubles and I created in different uh, ways besides acrylic pouring and so now I'm back to the one, the one that you know really makes me happy and that is and the other is teaching the acrylic painting that is where my heart lies so now I'm just going to go ahead and tilt over the edge of this pale purple
give it a chance to like totally go over the edges and cover that pale purple. Now if I didn't have OGX in it, this might be pretty darn interesting because uh, it looks very kind of galaxy-ish. But because I had OGX, then you have these really huge cells and people say they can't get cells. If you use OGX, you're going to get cells unless you like stir it way too much, you're going to get you're going to get the reaction of cells, no doubt. You just can't ever do it. Because it takes with OGX it takes very little to get a lot. And I'm just trying to cover my corners that I didn't totally get covered with paint. So yeah, I like what's going on there where these pale purple spots are kind of popping through. That won't be happening here because there was none of that pale purple there. But I do like what's happening better. I'm going to heat it again. Now I'm just going to let it sit, I think, for a little while. I'm going to turn these two lights off because they put big circles of white when you're doing a deeper colored canvas too. It just kind of makes it a little distracting. So I'm going to let this sit for a little while. Let some of the cells kind of pop up and then I may tilt it again in just a little bit. But for now I'm just going to let it be. So now what I did is I took all of my leftovers that are in my that were in my cups, poured them into one little cup, and I'm going to re-pour a tree ring right in the center. Just with it's like an ounce or two of paint. There's not much paint in this cup. My original cup had 12 ounces of paint that I poured over the whole canvas and added the really pale, pale purple on the outskirts of it. So here is that and those are the colors that I use but right here in the center I am going to just pop any air bubbles just to make sure. I don't ever do it with a heat gun. And now I'm going to try to tilt this a little bit without losing my pale purple shapes that are on the corners of my canvas. I wanted to kind of get rid of some of this black in the center if I could. That's why I'm, I'm not crazy about tree ring pours where the center, you know, it just becomes the huge focal point. So I'm just kind of doing the swirlies here. But I want to keep these pale purple cells on the outskirts. So I'm just going to find a pattern that's pleasing to my eye. Because there's not a lot of paint in the center from that cup, it's not it's not going to spread that much. But I'm going to try to pour off a little bit over there.
while it was sitting, I was getting other paints ready. I'm going to do my next tutorial, one of the tutorials I'm going to be working on this week, a pretty extensive one with some art involved, is with Unicorn Spit. The company sent me a ton of free product to experiment and do a video with so that they could maybe use it and maybe you'll get to see it. And I'm real excited because I've never used Unicorn Spit. It's a gel stain medium. It's water-based and water activates it. So you can add up to 70% water to thin it out to a stain or glaze or you can let it stay really thick and opaque. You can paint on wood and glass and fabric and all kinds of surfaces. I haven't really seen that many pores with the Unicorn Spit. I think people use it in their resin art. And the one thing about Unicorn Spit is because it is water activated, you do have to seal it with an oil-based sealer or resin or, you know, an oil spray. So that is going to be something I'm going to be experimenting with in the next day or two and I'm real excited. I'm going to do a big Lazy Susan circle that is wooden and paint on that and make it just really creative and funky and I'm looking forward to that. It smells really good. It has a jasmine scent to it and I am just really tickled pink about experimenting with that. So that's going to be one of my next videos that I do. So I'm loving the colors. I kind of wish the purple was a little bit more prevalent and that's okay. The blue is super strong and the blue is pretty so I'm okay with all that. And I wanted the black. I wanted it to feel darker as opposed to lighter. So many uh, of that Melly D style cloudy effects that people do end up being really washed out or really pale and that's why I was trying to go with some stronger deeper colors and it would have been really pretty if I had used more if I'd used white in it but I decided to use black instead and my palest color was this really pale lavender that I made from the violet color mixed with a little bit of the white Deco Art Satin Enamel. And those always come in the 8 ounce containers. They're a little harder to find because so many people are using them. So I'm going to put this one aside to dry. And there's some really cool things going on. You know, I did drop a tube of paint in it. And, you know, I didn't record when I thought I was recording. So, you know, sometimes things happen like that. But I hope you have a fabulous day. Day, and I will see you on the next video. Thank you so much. I'm going to bring it up to you to show you up close just a little bit better what it looks like. All right. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.